People tend to remember stories. We like to tell stories. Maybe that's why Jesus was such a good storyteller. And probably one of his most popular storytelling themes was that of money and possessions. I read this week that of Jesus' 38 parables, 16 of them have to do with stewardship or money and possessions in general. Or if you look more broadly at the rest of Scripture, about 2,300 passages in Scripture deal with stewardship, money, and possessions. Now, compare that, maybe that's just kind of a, a random number to you, but compare that to, say, uh, how much Scripture talks about love. About one-third that many talk about love, 700 passages. Or one-tenth of those talk about faith. So this is a central theme just recurring throughout Scripture. Is a famous part of Jesus' teachings. Money stories are everywhere in Scripture because money is everywhere in our lives. And everyone has a money story. So just as Jesus' context, though, shaped the way that he talked about money and shared about money, like treasures in a hidden field that we might not uh, necessarily connect with, so too our context shapes the way that we think about money. But the problem is we don't all come from the same context. Rather, it maybe is better to talk about what are our contexts, plural, that we bring to our stories and our understanding of money and finances. Because we don't all have the same money story. So this morning, or this afternoon for us, maybe this morning for you, we have the privilege of hearing some money stories from some folks in our congregation. And I look forward to hearing from each of them. We'll have them share a little bit about their background in case you're watching this morning and you don't know, uh, know them personally and don't know where they've come from. Uh, and then we'll ask the same questions for, for each of them to hear just a little bit about their experiences early on in life and the teachings early on in life that they had regarding money. And we look forward to hopefully hearing some people's money stories on our Zoom fellowship time on Sunday as well. So first, I would love to invite up Febri Cristiani to share a little bit about her money stories growing up. All right, well, welcome, Fibri. Thank you for being here this morning, well, this afternoon, maybe this morning for everybody else. Um, tell us a little bit about the context in which you grew up. Where are you from? What, what was your early childhood like? I grew up in a little village in the island of Jaffa in Indonesia. And uh, our family was poor. Uh, early in my, early in my life, my father was working in a company owned by government, but when I was five, uh, the government and the company was kind of like bankrupt. And then it's just, it was just really hard time for our family. And my sister got sick. So uh, early in my life, we just, we just did not have enough. We barely had enough. So dad is our company. Mm. So it's, yeah, it was really hard, a uh, hard time growing up. And in Indonesia, uh, back then it was not, it's, it was hard to find a job. So my parents were really having a hard time to keep up. And uh, luckily they had, they inherited a rice farm from my grandparents. So that was, that was uh, the thing that helped us to keep going, that helped us, like, help my parents to keep uh, sending us to school. Hmm. So. Wow. So in your home growing up, and I thank you for sharing that context, in your grow home growing up, how was money talked about? It was something that we barely talked about, and, and I was very small when this crisis happened. So my parents, like there was tension in the house about money, but they, my parents never openly talk about money. Mm -hmm. So it was just like money is something that really important, that something that we needed, but we, we not 
supposed to like just like spend money for something that we want because it's not even enough for something that we need. Hmm. So yeah, it's just money, something precious, uh, something crucial, and yeah, something that we did not have enough. Hmm. But what I remember those years is that even though we did not have enough money, my parents is are like saying that even though we did not have enough money, we still have something else to give. Hmm. So that's something that giving, something that they taught us is giving is not always about money. So even though we did not have enough money, we still have something else to give to our neighbors. Hmm. So that's, that's what I remember. That's a beautiful lesson to learn growing up. Um, you've kind of already shared a little bit about your first memory of money, but what was like your first major purchase that you remember? As, and maybe it was when you got a little bit older since things were really tight when you were younger, but mm -hmm. what was the first thing you really remember maybe saving up for or, or buying? Something. Yeah, and when I remember uh, knowing this question, when I look back about my memories, and I just surprised myself that it just happened a few years ago mm. when I was in college, maybe in 2015. It's just like a few years ago that I could really save up my money just to buy food. Mm. So it just happened a few years ago, but it's just like I earned my money, I saved my money, and I used my money for something that I want and I need. And it feels really good. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. But it just happened like a few years Very ago, recently. so it's not like yeah. back then. So yeah. yeah, that wasn't an experience that you had growing up. It was nope. very recent. Yeah. Uh, hmm. um, how about in your church context growing up? What was the conversation or like teaching about money um, in church growing up? So I grew up in a Catholic church and I barely remember any teaching about money or stewardship. It's just like, yes, uh, giving is important, but what does it mean being Christian and what does it mean to have, like how to manage money? And I just could not remember. And when I was like young adult in, in my youth, I also did not remember any teaching like, in the church that other than giving to church like as a offering is the mass, but like other than that, how we manage uh, our money as a whole, as and being a Christian, what does it mean? I just could not remember. Hmm. Yeah, that's okay. I wonder, yeah, maybe it had to do with just people not having a lot of extra money to give, and so that's not something that you would need to talk about. Yeah. Hmm. Um, over the years, do you feel like your views on money have changed? And if they have, how do you feel like maybe they've changed? Yeah, to have experience that growing up as a poor and then such a struggle just to survive for a daily needs and a basic need, my view now about money is just it's something that we need, but yeah, it's just, it's a gift from God. It's just, it's a blessing. We, even though we earn money, we just never know when it comes and when it goes. Yes, we work hard, we earn money, but having that experience and now having enough, it's just, it's a, it's a blessing. Mm. It's something that, yeah, it's not something that have power over me, but it's something that, yeah, this is something that is, will give me life and will give, uh, I will have the opportunity to give more to others instead of just like, yes, I can give to others, uh, not about money, but also now I have the opportunity to also to give money to other people. Wow. Well, thank you, February. And um, on behalf of the congregation, 
thank you so much for sharing your story. I'm sure people might want to hear some more too. So if you happen to get emails or phone calls, I apologize, but uh, yeah, I'm sure you'll be hearing more. Uh, that's really interesting um, story, and I thank you for sharing that with us today. Thank so you. yeah. Thank you. Next up is Louise Clausen. She will be sharing about a yeah a very different context growing up. So yeah, that's fine. Come on up this way. Louise, welcome, and thank you for being with us here. Um, just like with February, please give us a little bit of background about what your context was growing up. Um, I was born in Germany two weeks before World War II began, and at age five, we became refugees. So my experience with money didn't happen until after my experience as a refugee, which was when I was about 10 years old. So that is my context. Mm -hmm. Not a context many of us share, so this is, yeah, a real treasure to be able to hear from you. Um, in your home growing up, and maybe this is more post being in your refugee years, how was money talked about? Uh, well, we were very poor, of course. Um, my mother had to go and clean houses for others, and so we just had enough money to buy the essential things that we needed. Um, we experienced a lot of giving to us. As a refugee in the refugee camp, we received packages. As we came to the United States, somebody helped us by coming, help paying our way to come to the United States. And, um, Somebody here provided us with a house and with a cow and chickens. So uh, we, were, we received many, many gifts. And uh, so um, we were dependent a lot on the graciousness of the giving of others. And that's shaped, I think, a lot of who I am. What was your first memory of, of money? Um, well, I began working very early when I was about um, 12 years, 13 years old. I was babysitting and I was helping in a household on, for a farm family. So I was earning some of my own money um, and I didn't use it to buy things that I really wanted. I don't think that I even wanted anything except for what I needed because I would buy the fabric to make my dresses, I would buy school supplies. Um, so in that way, I was helping to support uh, the family. Um, my brother also worked very early. We all did and helped um, provide things that we had in the house. So. Hmm. So working very early on was part of your experience. Do you, do you remember a particular purchase early on that you saved up for, or anything like that? That happened when I was, thank you for sending that question because I had a chance to think about that. Um, I was in college and I was working in the registrar's office to help my, pay my way through school. And in the summers I worked there as well. And so I was able to save a little bit of money. And I saw something in the store window, a beautiful blouse. I tried it on and it was had lace at the collar and had long sleeves and it just fit me perfectly, but it was $12, which when I was a college student back in 1959, it was very, it was a lot of money. But one thing that my mother taught us was that when you buy something, you have, you save up for it. You don't buy something if you can't afford it. And also, you buy something that is, of, that is of good quality so that it will last a long time so that you don't have to buy it again right away. So that was in my mind when I decided to purchase this $12 blouse. And I think I wore it for 20 years. <laughs> sure your mom was proud, yeah, wow. How about in your church context? Um, what was the conversation like at church about stewardship or money? Yeah. Um, in our church, the teaching was that you tithe, 
that you give a tenth of what you earn, uh, which for me was very easy to do because I wanted to give, because I had received so much. I wanted to give back to others. Um, as far as teaching about how to spend your own money, um, term, you know, what to purchase or what not to, or how to use your money, that didn't, I can't remember any conversation like February about doing stewardship other than the 10% that we should give to the church. Over the years, do you feel like your views on money have changed at all? And if so, how? I think I still feel very much the same. I have never experienced that of holding money tightly. To me, money was something that we could use for our own needs. And then I just have the joy of giving to others because we have more than what we need. So um, it's just been a part of my who I am, because I received so much as a child. Hmm. Wow. Well, thank you so much for, for sharing that, Louise. Um, it's always a treasure to hear your stories from your younger years, and yeah, especially really interesting to hear about money, kind of how that was woven into it. So thank you so much. Yeah, you can just leave that there. And then our next contestant this morning is Mr. Theo Odiambo will be sharing with us a little about different contexts that he grew up in. Welcome, Theo. Thank you for being with us. Um, Thank you very much. Tell us a little bit about the kind of context that you grew up in, in case there's folks watching that, that don't know you. Yeah, my name is Theo Odiambo. I grew up. Uh, in Tanzania, East Africa. My dad was a, a preacher. At the same time, he was uh, raising his own crop and uh, animals, so that uh, that's what we, as a family, we depended on that one too much. And uh, the money was not, uh, yeah, that's the source of our income. Hmm. So, Kind of talking about your family background, Theo, how was, if you remember, how was money talked about when you were a kid in your home? Or do you remember it being talked about? Money was not talked about very much. I don't know why. But uh, I think um, uh, back then, you know, the money was introduced to the country by the colonization, like the British, and uh, the first money which was used in, in East Africa was uh, the, it has the King George the Fifth, King John the Seventh, King George. So you can tell that that was not from originally from Tanzania, but uh, later it was, you know, now we are using money. But I think the reason why we did not uh, grow up talking about money too much because it was due to the butter trade. Hmm. I need a goat, but I have a cow. Can you add me like three goats so that we equal to one cow? So that was the kind of the life which was uh, mm -hmm. used very much in that area, hmm. especially in the agrarian area, in the, in the villages, mm -hmm. yeah. That's interesting, because it's more based on a bartering system and less yeah. on, mm -hmm. on money. Uh, interesting. Um, I mean, you shared a little bit about uh, some things with money. Do you have like a first memory of, of money? Uh, for, for maybe your first time you saw these coins or something, I don't know. Yeah, um, it is a clear memory. I think uh, this was the time where um, the British introduced money was facing out. It was like a, a round coin with a whole punch in between. So I think uh, that was like 10 cents. So, and then uh, when I ask uh, why was this one done, I think it was because of the storage. Because during those times, maybe we did not have pockets. So if you have those punched holes within a coin, then you can uh, tie a lot of money within a string, 
and maybe hang it to your waist somewhere for, for safety reason. Yeah. So yeah, that is my first memory of that. Mm. And when uh, I was growing up, when I was like maybe five, those were just, this was facing out, but it was like our toys. We used to play around because they didn't have any value anymore. Mm. Yeah. Interesting. How about um, maybe a first major purchase, something that you saved up for and bought when you were younger? Yeah, uh, I remember it was not a long time ago, but I think after I came to the, to the seminary. But growing up as a kid, uh, our neighbor had like a, a record player. So you'd play that record in the village and then uh, kids, you would sneak and go dance a little bit. So I remember one day I came home, I asked my dad, can you also buy a record player so that we listen to the music at home? Then uh, my dad just laughed. I said, no, son, we only sing by our mouth. <laughs> so that was, it stick in my mind. Okay, we sing by my mouth. Truly, every night before we go to bed, we would sing hymnal and then pray. But uh, my memory did not uh, stop there because I wanted to save to buy like uh, a stereo mm -hmm. and then uh, when i was uh, at the seminary i saved up like uh, 150 dollars and i went to best buy and purchased this stereo it was <laughs> loud <laughs> yeah and then yeah so i brought it back to tanzania after i graduated and then i showed my dad you know i bought it i liked it <laughs> <laughs> oh man so how about in the, in the church growing up? Was there much of a conversation about money or finances? I mean, especially with your dad being a pastor. It was not very much mentioned, but um, I think there were encouraging people like during Easter and Christmas to give a little bit more. Uh, yeah, I think that's the only way it was being encouraged. But I don't know why, maybe the missionaries did not teach well. Maybe, you know, money was not originated from Tanzania, and uh, Tanzania did not have any money. The money they had had uh, like uh, the British name in it. So I don't know, but um, I just think that um, there was. The reason that I don't know why it was not talked very much, but uh, I remember they encouraged people during Easter and Christmas to give more. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. So you're in a, a little bit of a different context now. Do you feel like, Theo, your, your views on money or your understanding of money has changed over the years? And if so, how? It has changed very much. And um, growing and living in different contexts. Yeah, in uh, here, in America, capitalist system, you can't live without money. You have to work, 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 and pay, 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 you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> they value you before even they know what you come. You are. So work hard and pay 